to welcome down to a very special episode of the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. This is episode number 76. Yes. And we are on location. And if you're watching this on the second channel, you'll see that we have got the greatest backdrop in golf. Yes. Who would have thought when we started the podcast, this would be where we were sitting right now? This... Yeah, I, I think today's podcast might be quite bad because I'm speechless. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Also, I want to give a massive shout out to our fantastic sponsors, Motor Caddy, who do amazing electric motorized trolleys. Um, again, we've been using ours loads. I had a little issue with my remote, but they fixed it within seconds. I'll say seconds, less than 24 hours, and we're back up and running. And uh, that's because someone broke your remote, though. That wasn't your. That wasn't the Motor Caddy's fault. That it was wasn't. That was quite and, and I'm not going to blame anybody, but there's someone that sat quite close to me was trying to get the camera bag out of my car and actually snap the remote control out of my Motor Caddy. But either way, it's been fixed now. Anyway, we digress. Where are we, guy? And what have we been up to? We are at. We are, I can't even speak. <laughs> we are at Saint Andrews. And we are currently in the Old Course Hotel, looking over the 17th, the road hole, one of the most famous golf holes in the world. And yesterday, we played the Old Course. For the first time ever. And I've I've been here, I lost count how many times I've been mm-hmm. here. Probably, I would say at least upwards of 10, probably getting closer to 20. Probably the same or maybe more for you? Oh no, not that many. I've p- probably been six. Okay. Lots, lots, uh, watched loads of opens here, been here for events, been here for all sorts of different things, but never once in my time as being a golf professional, working in the industry or anything, I've had the chance to play the old course. Where this weekend, and we can say everything now because this podcast is going to come out after the actual event. Oh, yeah. This weekend is going to be, and I mean this, a bucket list weekend of golf. Uh, for me especially, and for the viewers watching the channels, but also I want to make it a little bit special for you because everybody listening will know that Guy's getting married in, from this moment now, two weeks on Sunday. Yes. Or people listening to the podcast less than two, two weeks two now. Weeks, yeah. You've had a bit of a torrid time with COVID and moving the wedding, this, that and the other. So I wanted to make a little special day for you because you've never played old course in never. Africa. So yesterday I might have told a few little cheeky little fibs. Little white lies. Um, I've been liaising with Guy's family, his brother, his mum, his fiance, his dad, and uh, we managed to pull off the surprise of the century. It was outrageous. You, you let's just set the scene a little bit. So when you were coming up here to work, which is true, that's right. You said we're going to we'll come on to it in a minute. By the way, yes, you said to me we're going up on the Friday, and we're meeting somebody from St Andrews Trust, whoever it was, or the RNA. And they're going to show us around the golf course, certain holes, certain iconic holes we need to know about when filming, etc. Okay, great. You then said, come in your golf clothes because we may, there might be a chance in the afternoon, we can get on the old course and play a few holes. Yes. So that was um, already amazing. I was really excited. So you picked me up at seven o'clock on yep. Saturday morning. Nice. Friday you about, morning. Friday morning. About two minutes past seven. You were really on time. That was a good for start. For me, today. that's early. Really, really early for you. Set off, a long drive, but a good drive. Yeah. No traffic, everything was going well. We get St. Andrews, it's absolutely horrendous weather. Let's properly, properly set the scene. And I wanna, when we say horrendous weather, I've never experienced rain and wind on a golf course like that, ever. Like it was, it was biblical. It was, wind was coming in sidewards. You couldn't even put an umbrella up. Like we parked locally at the museum and like getting out the car was a challenge. Like opening the door was it's a challenge. Horrendous. We're getting out the car. I'm putting on, my, we're putting on jackets and I'm saying to Guy, come on Guy, we're going meeting this guy called Laurie near the first tee because he's going to show us around the golf course. And, and to be honest, you were very like, um, what's the right word? Like excited about it. Like you were, you weren't, because it was bad weather, we could have easily sat in the car there and gone, really, do I have to go and meet this guy now? Like, can we not just wait 10 minutes? But you were dead up for it. We both got our coats on. We're walking down to the iconic first hole. I mean, we're talking St. Andrews, the home of golf, where it's all happened. All the greats have played here. Jack Nicholas, Gary Player, old Tom Morris, the old history that all goes behind that. Tiger Woods walking now, the 18th fairway, and he's picking up his, his uh, Open Championship. The famous picture of Seve took place just there, just on that green, it's just nice. behind us, that David Cannon took, who we had on the guest a couple of weeks ago. So I'd arranged for Guy's brother, yes, Giles, who's a... Pretty handy golfer, actually. Not bad. And Guy's dad, who used yeah. to play golf, but... He used to play. He was never amazing, but he, he likes golf, loves golf, but he loves just walking around and watching us and just kind of seeing the scenery and 
that kind of stuff. And he was very trigger happy with his camera. Yes. Took over 700 pictures. It's outrageous. And I'd already arranged with Giles that we're going to meet near the first tee. So I'm walking along and I'm, I'm filming a group of players on the first tee. Did you th- think that the was only, weird? Think, all I thought was weird was we got, out the, we got out of the car, walked towards the first tee. And you were filming people on the first tee, which I thought you were just doing just because it's like an Instagram story or something. But you were filming them for quite a while, but I didn't think, obviously, anything. I thought you filmed them for quite a while. And next thing, we turned around the corner of the starter's hut, and my brother and my dad just appeared from nowhere. So I was absolutely gobsmacked. And obviously, then you flipped the camera straight onto me, obviously, which is why you were filming in the first place. I think if you want to watch Guy's reaction, we'll insert it now and yes. go and check out the second channel, and you can see it on YouTube, his reaction. It- <laughs> so we are playing today. Oh my god. We played at half one. <laughs> it was it was shocked but also quite muted. It was because yeah, because when you watch like T V programmes where somebody like meets a long lost relative or they win a car or a house and sometimes they scream the heads off, don't they? And they go mad. Other times you almost don't look even remotely interested. But it's just shock. And I'm yeah. still feeling it now. It's that like shock of like, what on earth is going on here? So I then tell Guy, we have got a tea time at the yeah. old course. We're playing in, in two hours at that moment in time. And me and Giles, Guy's brother, were a bit like, God, are we playing in this bad weather? Where you were just like over the moon. Be- like yeah, Because you you knew it was happening for weeks and months. Yes. So you were hoping for a day like today, yes. where it's amazing. I had no idea. So I would... I would have played in any weather to play the old course that, that moment in time. So big surprise. We went we told him we're staying in the old course hotel, which we're staying which we are in right now. So thanks for the guys here for setting up this room as well. And the and the views on this golf course are just Outrageous. spectacular from this hotel. This is the famous hotel that you drive over on the seventeenth where you cut the corner. So we went over to the driving range, which is a little bit of a walk away. We actually drove around there, hit some balls, and again it was just like horrendous weather and we were looking at the weather report and going please please stop raining like it was 100% rain 90% rain it was it was dead cert to be a horrendous afternoon but we were like well let's just wrap up let's get out there and let's go and play uh, hit a handful of golf balls each on the driving range went and grabbed a quick bite to eat in the Eden Golf Club I believe it was yeah then we parked up in the Old Course Hotel, walked back over the golf course, and I'd also surprised Guy and Giles and me with caddies, which was a really, that was quite good, actually, I, wasn't it? I really liked it. Weirdly, on the way up, you said to me, I'm going to get some cash out at the petrol station, because if we play, we might have caddies. And I was like, well, I don't know if I'm that bothered. I'm a caddy, really. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, fine. <laughs> Obviously, when you guys go, by the way, we're having caddies. I was like, actually, it's fine. I'll have a caddy. I'm I thinking, really enjoyed having well, a caddy. You don't believe I have one then. All right, then. <laughs> um, it yes. was really good. Yeah, so... Um, we walked back over and again we're in the starters hut and we're looking around and it, it was pretty bad weather but we're like come on let's get out there <clears throat> and it was really cool because there was there was a few students from the University of St Andrews coming to the first tee to watch because yeah. they kind of knew weirdly we were playing because they'd seen it on the starters hut one of them um, Charlie Webb nearly spoiled it the whole surprise <laughs> we won't go into that he spotted our name on the tee sheet and anyway we luckily we the dodged end. a bullet um, teed off the first hole and uh, you had the greatest round of <laughs> your life. You know what? Right, so let's just set the scene. <laughs> it's howling. It's windy. A bit nervous. Just still absolutely dazed. Couldn't believe it. It's just mad. So just a strange Were feeling. you nervous on that first tee shot? <sighs> Not ner- No, well, it helps that it's the widest hole in the world, doesn't it? Yeah. Literally 200 yards wide. And you're saying? hitting like a 220-yard shot. It's a little too high, which I know... I'm not, hit, I'm not going to hit necessarily a great one, but I know I'm not going to hit a horrendous one. With a drive, it could go anywhere. Two iron's going to be fairly safe. So I wouldn't say I was necessarily nervous, but I was just like, the moment was mad. Hit an all right one, not amazing. But the wind was horrendous. So I thought to myself, I'm not bothered about going to try and shoot an amazing score today because it's not what it's about. But equally, I don't want to play so bad that I just don't enjoy it. You weren't bothered about keeping a scorecard at first, not, were you? Well, my brother said, let's swap cards, me and him, and actually have a proper like scorecard. And you said, let's have a match, me and you. So I had like, almost two, not two games going on, but I had a scorecard to mark and a match with you. But I just thought, I'm going to play for bogeys today. Yeah. Not obviously, I'm not going to miss par putts on purpose, <laughs> but I'm going to be happy with bogeys, yeah. which obviously if you have 18 bogeys, that's a 90, which isn't great. But I thought, I'm going to have some pars in there, so that's hopefully bring that down. And then my main thing was no doubles. If I can have no doubles, I know I might make a birdie or two, make a few pars, and that's a mid-80s, and I'll take that in today's conditions. Yeah. And I've played quite well. I didn't, well, I hit a lot of, didn't hit many great shots, hit one or two, 
but just hit loads of shots that weren't great, but they were fine. Yeah, they were definitely. safe. Your misses were phenomenal yesterday. The ball was travelling nowhere. There yeah. were so many times at 150 yards, hit like a four iron, yeah. came up short. Yeah, I was, was the outrageous. same. Outrageous. My caddy was saying like on some some occasions, he was he was really good. My caddy Dave, he's from San Fran- San Francisco in the US, but he moved over here 30 years ago. Um, how mad was it with the bird? He had a bird walking around with him the whole way. Like he had this, what was it called? Not, a, I would describe it as a crow, but it wasn't. He described know, it as something else. Thing. It was like, and this bird literally followed my caddy round all the way, walking, flying. So that. But anyway, it was, I became quite good friends with it because I said at first, "God, that bird's struggling," he, or something like, "He's really struggling to fly," and he just turned around, and went she, and I was like, "Oh God, you oh know this bird on a personal level, do you?" <laughs> <laughs> um, I, for me, when I teed it up, I was actually. For me, remarkably calm on the first hole, quite chilled. You know, it's just it was kind of your experience. So even though it was my first first time playing it as well, I I almost kind of didn't think it was that big a deal because I, I wanted you to have such a great day. So I remember teeing it up, and I'm there, stood up with a four iron, thinking it's four iron. Oh, this is dead easy. Like I've got all the room in the world to hit it, and I literally teed it up, and I've stood on my ball, and suddenly my legs went like properly jelly legs. I'm thinking, oh crap. I'm at St. Andrews. First tee shot on the old course. I'm at the old course. There's a bit of a crowd forming from these lads from the university. Yes, there's a big fairway, but I'm not sure if I'm even going to hit this it, golf ball. That's the thing. It's not, that was it. It's not even hitting the fairway. It's hitting the golf ball. <laughs> it's the weirdest feeling. So I've hit this like toey, drawy thing and then pushed massively with, with the wind, but luckily hit the fairway anyway because it's so big. Um, front nine, we were quite level pegging. Yep. You had a string of like six fives I in have, a row. I had. Uh, it either seven or six fives in a row, which was, I think, six bogeys in a par. So I think we were level pegging after nine. Your brother had an amazing ninth hole. Yes. Describe this. So it was three, was it 340 yards? 340, 347 it was. 347 off the, off the tee. It was wind, wind help, and it was the first hole we'd had the wind behind us, I yeah. think, kind of off the left. So I, I think I had two iron down there. I can't remember actually now. But it was if, if you smashed the drive, you had a chance of getting on. Yeah. He hit this drive that he aimed quite far left, absolutely mulled it, perfect strike. Down the left, wind brought it in, ended up on the green. Pin high, probably about 35 30, feet. Th- yeah, 30, 35 foot. So he has an eagle putt. So I was thinking, this could be a three foot par. <laughs> <laughs> this could be... A four put double because his putting's hit and miss. What's his What's his actual handicap? I think it's like his index like nine point seven. He's ten, but he's okay. quite. Yeah, he's he's actually fixed a few things in his swing, but he can be quite hit and miss. But he, yeah. he, can, he can get it round. So he had, the, but he's he's got quite a strange. He's putting stroke. He's quite short, but he hits it with pace. Okay, yeah. So it's quite like when he's on with putting, he hits a lot. Of, he gets a lot of putts in. They'll hit yeah. the back of the cup and drop. But equally, if they miss the cut, they're going past. <laughs> and the greens at that speed and so undulating will come on yeah, tight in a minute. And the wind and everything. And the wind. So ninth green is probably the fattest green we've played so far. Yeah. Not taking any disrespect back from Giles because it, it <laughs> just generally was. Straight back into wind. You started filming it and uh, he sinks he, it. He dropped it for an eagle. I think again, I'm sorry if this, if you listen on the podcast, properly podcast, there might be a few clips that we're going to put on the second channel today. But let's just show that eagle port for everybody watching on the second channel. And then he did a little birdie dance. <laughs> he was abs. Because I think for him, he wanted to obviously get a decent enough score together. But he was just... So happy to have an eagle on the old course in yeah. that condition on his first time playing it. So that was obviously a big moment for him. And then I won the match, beat you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold <laughs> I'm fire. I'm a jump well ahead. Hold fire. <laughs> I want to just get out right now. <laughs> I beat Rick Shields on the match. He's never, guy, you've never beat me in a match. I've had about six matches. You've battered me once and the rest of them you've beat me. But it's always, it has been other than that one you battered me. Well, you always want to play me scratch. Yeah. And it's not been much more than two and one and stuff no. like that. So for the first time you beat me, I happened to be at the old course. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm, I am just such a nice guy in that manner. You know, I didn't only just want to you treat above you, and beyond. your family. I also wanted you to play. I, I made it so you played great golf. I mean, yeah. there was a couple of times where your ball went in the bush, but what you didn't see, I had a little spotter out there. Ah. I had a little guy, a little Scottish fella, just kick it back out into play and going, go on, let's get, let's get a guy a good round today. It was course for me though, because there was a lot of room left. Yeah. So I have a snap hook as a bad... Well, I can hit it either way, but bad, <laughs> I have a, a left is a bad miss. I did a few of those, but it was actually so much room. Yeah. I was actually one up after nine or ten. I was yes. one up at through ten in the match. Where did I did I win two and one then? You or won. One? Or three and uh, one? You won about four holes on the bounce. You won that par three, Standard. which was ridiculously hard. That was the best par three shot I've ever hit. I did a two-iron brother, a driver. So this is the 11th. Again, on a day like today, 
And it's so mad, the contrast in weather. Like today, it's calm, it's sunny, it's beautiful. I can almost imagine we were sitting at a tie into that flag today. Mm-hmm. Could you? Because it was oh, yeah, only like it was, 160 yards. It was, but it was the one that's most <laughs> on the coast, if you like. The wind was howling into I, I think, I know it's hard to put into words how windy it actually yeah. was, but I literally had a two iron in it. And it was gusted. So happy with it. I'll tell you what, this is how we can describe how windy it was. Two things happened I've never seen on a golf course. A ball genuinely blew off the tee, off yeah. your brother's tee. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. Not the guy has. Like, that's got to be pretty windy. And there was one time where I was putting my ball down on the par three eight, and the ball would not stay on the yeah, stay still. That was mad. Like I literally had to put it down like ten or times, and it would not stay still. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea, if that was a, if the open was on yesterday, it wouldn't have been played. Well, no, because it was moving on the green. So yeah, there's wouldn't. no chance it would have been played. That's just making sure. Everybody listening. Score, super, super, super impressive. Everybody listening knows how bloody hard it was. Um, so, yeah, that par three, your brother hit a driver. <laughs> you hit a two iron into an amazing shot. And I, I think I had four iron on the green. You won that hole because I three putted it, you two putted it. And then from that point, you just went on a run. Yeah. Like you, in your head, front nine was all about bogeys. Back nine, downwind a little it bit, more camping. off your left. Yeah. You'd settled in, you'd kind of got over the shock a little bit, and you just, the bat nine, you shot two over bat nine, right? Two over bat nine, yeah. You played with awesome. a ridiculous, with a one bad, bad bogey at the side of a par five and two off with a six. Thin to chip, just schoolboy error. You made no double bogey. No double, that was the bat, was that was really I double target. bogeyed the first. Oh, like, yeah. I just double bogeyed straight off from the bat. Uh, you didn't double bogey any hole. Um, you obviously shot 81. I didn't really keep score, my count, uh, keep score of my shots, but I shot more than 81, obviously. Uh, not many more, but not a great round of golf for me. Um, I've always found that whenever I've played a golf course that I've been excited to play, you play I don't bad. play well. Because I'm so like... You try to take it in and get pictures. Yeah, and... I'm so like in awe of the facility, like the place. I'm like, oh God, do you remember when that happened? Or do you remember this? Or, oh God, that's that hole I've seen on TV that many times. And, and I just, I don't play golf. I think the thing is, when you come in something like this, it's not about playing amazing golf. No. But it's also, there's a balance where if you play absolutely terrible, it can ruin it. Yeah. So what was quite fortunate is I played, did actually play quite well, I was happy with that. You played, not your best, but you weren't horrendous. No, I just couldn't, I couldn't score. Yeah, and I think my brother shot 91, which was 19 over. He's off about 10. So he's obviously over his handicap, but it was very tough. And yeah. he didn't like, he hit a couple of bad ones. He hit a bad one 18, oh, unfortunately. Yeah. We had to eat a house and put someone, someone got a black eye. Um, You've been waiting to say that on the podcast. Yeah, but... He, he didn't play bad enough. To, he, he enjoyed it. And, like, I know you should always enjoy it. It's not about trying to win when you're playing friendly rounds, but there is a point in golf. If you're going lost ball, lost yeah. ball, fat, lost ball, thin through the green, it does start to get on you, but we all played well enough to enjoy it. Well, to, on the 18th tee, we all had our original ball that we played with. Yes. You didn't lose a ball. I didn't lose a ball. Giles didn't lose a ball until the, the 18th, 18th tee. tee. Um, describe how kind of emotional it was playing with your brother and your dad like at the St Andrews is that is that something well, like that's describable what we missed out was obviously I was meant to get married last year yeah and I think a month or two before I was due to get married obviously Covid ruined all that I was meant to come up with my dad and my brother to St Andrews for a couple of days to hopefully play golf but wasn't guaranteed to get on the old course but just come up and have a couple of nights here like a bit of a mini family stag do yeah I mean I, we're a bit weird because my dad doesn't drink my brother doesn't drink and I'm not really a big drinker so it wouldn't have been a proper boozy <laughs> lad stag do it would have been just seeing the town and <laughs> nice like, meals yeah just enjoying ourselves so that was cancelled so then when they were here and we got to do that like this weekend that was unbelievable but yeah it was just what well, it, it didn't sink in for a while and I think I think it's not even now. But obviously the benefit is I've got those pictures on my phone forever now on the Swilcombe Bridge of all of us. It's so good. And then what we've not said is I hit one of the best shots of my life on 18. The best shot. It was unbelievable. So again, let's set the scene. Wind hard off the left. And if you know the 18th hole, this is the one where you play back towards the um, town, effectively. Down the right side, you just can't miss right. Got buildings, cars, people, I dogs, can't bel- toddlers. I, I, I can't believe people park there. Yeah, like, it's ridiculous. Like, it shocks me. It's not even like it's a bad shot to hit it there. It's literally, it's the, yeah. like, you've got cars on the side of it's the hole. Meant, and you've got, like, Range Rovers there and all sorts, like, yeah. really nice vehicles. And, um, Guy, you, you knocked it down the left and the wind brought it. Wind brought it. was just about <laughs> safe. It was a good shot It was. But it was just the wind was so strong. Um, I went miles I went miles left, safety left. Giles was, again, we won't, won't say it any more times now. Giles he hit into the ball. house <laughs> into, onto the round side. <laughs> And uh, you stood there with a seven iron. It's 130 like, yards, hadn't it? A seven that's iron. That's crazy. A little like, three quarter three one, you quarter, said. Like nippy back foot. Not kind of a, not quite a punch and not quite a chip. Like, a, like I don't know, but yeah. 
straight over the flag. Straight over the flag. About 20 foot past, it kind of ended up running out to. Yeah. And as we're walking up there, I'm on the left-hand side, and we had one final surprise for you, which I think Giles and your dad was really like, they couldn't wait to get that off the chest yeah, a little bit. I think imagine. they, because obviously everyone wants to enjoy it, but I wanted the whole family to come up there, up here. So I kind of arranged for, uh, you have to have m- two more visitors to meet <laughs> you on the 18th green. And as we're walking up there, I start filming you and you're like, did you see that shot? I'm like, yeah, it was amazing. And I said to you something like in front of all your family. And I don't think you heard me the first time. And I said, in front of all, all your family. I just thought you meant it's give it a good shot in front of your dad and your brother on the last hole with a decent scorecard in your hand. And stood behind the 18th hole is your fantastic fiance Abby. Yeah. And your wonderful mum, Diane. Yeah. And you were just your face. Can't believe it. I'm just gonna insert this <laughs> clip into again the second channel. Sorry if you're listening, but jump over to the second channel because you're gonna see some of these clips. This is when Guy found out that Abby and his mum were stood on the 18th hole. All the what the hell? <laughs> It was just mad. I was, I couldn't believe it. I still can't. It's just weird. I was just like so shocked. <laughs> Your face was a picture then. That was the most shocked I saw you. Yeah, I was, that was weird. And then I, I was hoping to hold the putt for birdie. I just missed it and got the par. But it, this, again, saying it scores doesn't count. I was literally thinking sort of this putt. If I hold it, I've got an 80. If I miss yeah. it, it's 81. So it's still a good score in this condition. It's nine over. I obviously got my family here. You've organised all this, playing the course. I, I, I don't mind if I never play it again. And in some ways, I kind of don't want it in a way. I kind of want to have that as the only time. It sounds bizarre, doesn't it? But it was just so good. Um, oh, it's class. It was. Even, it. I feel like I'm not going to do a good podcast today because I can't really speak properly. It's fine. People love tuning bit, in. People still love feel it. a bit like weird. Um, yeah, so we surprised you with that and we all went out. We all stayed at the, this wonderful hotel and we got upgraded rooms, which was very nice. So thank you very much, Old Course Hotel. And uh, we went out for a nice state restaurant in the very town, nice. which is very nice. And I felt part of the family. I did. felt part of the Charnock click. And, well, when uh, you're paying, you get me to feel that way. Well, that's wonderful <laughs> then. <laughs> I might do that for more families. Um, and we had a lovely meal. Uh, me and your fiance were the only ones drinking. I was ready yeah. for a big night out. Yeah. And I didn't get the big night out, so hopefully we can get another big night out soon. Um, and we um, met I think this it's morning. because my family listens to podcasts. You know, if you have a few beers, next thing you'll be having fisticuff. <laughs> going, I'm Rick Hard. I want to go. You think you're hard? Do you know me? Do you know who I am? <laughs> cock of the Manchester, me. <laughs> yeah, the cock of Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. Um, like I say, I didn't play my greatest, but we are up here for the bucket list. Do you want to talk about anything more about what happened yesterday, apart from the fact you got your most no, likes so ever on Instagram? thank you so much. I, uh, yeah, I got 2,500 likes on Instagram, which is outrageous. I think I've only got about 4,000 followers, so it was, like, ridiculous. But it was some good pictures. But, no, I want to just thank you for organising it. I was so, so appreciative. It was unreal. But, as I said, I still feel a bit, like, weird. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just yeah. so shocked. Well, it was a, it was it was a wedding awesome. present, a thank you present for everything you do. So it was uh, Very nice of you. I wanted to so surprise good. you and do it properly. And I remember you saying that you wanted to come up here with your dad and your brother and play it before the wedding. And obviously with everything that's going on, I, wa- I didn't want to disappoint you with that. And having your fiance and your mum here, and I thought, I'm trying to get you to well up here. I know, I am a bit. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it would just be a perfect timing. And like I said, the conditions were tough, but we got out there, we smashed it. And then today, so let's explain now a little bit more of the weekend. Yes. Um, the reason why we're up here is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yes. So if we describe this, so the old course, as people know it right now, the first hole next to the 18th green, and you tee off in that ma- massive open fairway, and you play to the green that's on the right-hand side, and you come round and play the loop of the golf course, and you finish on the famous road hole bunker where you drive over the hotel, and then you come to that grandstand finish on 18. That's not always been the case. No. The old course was played in reverse it was so they used to have back in the day and i don't quite know the dates but we need to kind of figure this out <coughs> i can find it actually while you're telling they used to play it what would be called anti-clockwise which is the play the way they play it right now anti-clockwise so they start on the right side and come back down the left but they also used to play it clockwise where they'd start up the left so what i mean by that you tee off the first hole from the first tee and play towards the 17th green it's mad so you almost go cross. Then you tee off on the seventeenth, uh, the 18th tee and play to the 16th green. 
Mm-hmm. You then tee off on the 17th tee and play to the 15th green and so forth and so forth. And that's why some bunkers are potentially backwards, isn't it? The wrong way, it feels like. when you're like some, some bunkers on the course, be like, they, they shouldn't be in play and they're sat the wrong angle. So the only green that would actually be still be played as the 18th is the 18th green. Yeah. So you tee off on the second tee and play back towards the 18th green, which is back in the town. And like Guy mentioned, if you've been here a lot of times and you know the golf course and the history, there are some bunkers when you play it the, the new way around, the correct way around, that don't make sense. Like some bunkers out there that are like 30 yards off the tee. And you're thinking, why is there a bunker there? Yeah. That's weird. Apparently, and I'm going to find this out tomorrow, when you play it in reverse, those bunkers very much come into play. Yes. So this is an amazing opportunity. It has been set up by Callaway, which I want to be super transparent with. It's not a paid deal. Callaway have a, a relationship with St. Andrews and they want to do a cool video and they want to invite me to, to make this amazing video to share with the world. And I do think it'll be an amazing video. It's the number one course... It's a rumour that Tiger wants to play. Well, that's what they said to us. The only golf course in the world that Tiger... Well, well not the only... But well, the number one priority course that he's never played that he wants to. He wants to play it in reverse. Who Tomorrow, I'm going to play it in reverse. And it gets better because I've got a European tour player with me too. So Min Woo Lee. 21, is it? Or 22? 22, I think he is. 22-year-old, Australian kid. Unbelievable record so far in his early days on tour. He's already had a win. His sister's a massive name in the LET yes. world as well. She's had a win in Dubai. Uh, we are actually are going to do a podcast with him straight after this podcast. He's coming up in this room very soon, but that's going to come out in a couple of weeks. I'll probably release that actually when you're getting married. So yeah. I don't need, you know, we won't need to record on that week. But me and him battling it out. Oh, I think we're going to actually play as a team playing tomorrow, early in the morning on a Sunday. And that's also special in its own right. Because Sundays here at St. Andrews, the golf courses are closed. They're actually, you can't play golf here that on a Sunday. That is absolutely mad. And then, and not only that, they only let the public just walk around like it's a park. It's like they have picnics, people walk the dogs. Like, it, it's actually bonkers. Because I think how much revenue they lose because of that. Ridiculous. How much, how much is a tea time? It's like, like 1,200 quid or something. Is it 400 pounds? Yeah, three four hundred pounds I'm per sure, person. I'm sure. That's what I've been told. I'm sure it's 400 pounds a person. So imagine that for every Sunday... Four Sundays a month, so 52 Sundays a year, they're turning down probably in excess of, well, mi- probably millions. Yeah. Just so it can be used as a park. But that's that's, lo- that's the magic of St. Andrews. That's what I was saying to my you family. You love that with that, don't I you? I love it because there's so many parts of St. Andrews that any other course wouldn't like. So, for example, there's often no definition between the tee and the fairway and the green even. So you come off one green, there's a, next is two markers there. Whereas, like, when we went to Hillside last week, you got this massive manicured, like, big, thick, juicy rough, and in between is a lovely manicured tea. And I'd say that's quite rare with links. Like, that, you, you don't often get what you're saying at Hillside, where it's almost been manicured, yeah. like you say. You get it a bit more like a JCB course yeah. or a Celtic And I, and I love that, because it looks just pristine. Whereas here, it's almost like, to some degree, when you look out, you can't see what's a fur, what's a green, what's a tea. The flags, the actual physical flag... It's just quite thin and papery. It's like a mesh. It's like, a mesh. It's like well, it almost have like a community. It literally is. The, the actual T mark is just like these little round like balls. Yeah. It's all just so like what's the word? Like almost like humble. It, yeah. But it, it works so well. Like if you went to a, a Carnoustie Stephen or a JCB or anywhere that's a massive golf course, a Birkdale, and you saw that, you'd be thinking that's not quite what I expect. Yeah. But here, it's just. It works. It almost doesn't need to prove itself to exactly. anybody, does it? And then the fi- the seventeenth hole, which we can see literally looking at the green here, and the eighteenth, these most, like two of the most famous holes in the world, literally, aren't they? The eighteenth yeah. uh, here, at, um, St Andrews, is possibly the one of the most famous holes in the world, with seventeen as well, the road hole, and it's literally on the side of the road. Like yeah. You can literally somebody now can just w- park the car and just walk on. Yeah. But I love that. It's pheno- it's phenomenal, isn't it? It's just I mean, mad. It's. it's it's as close to, you, I mean, we are literally looking out the window now and there's hundreds of golfers that I can see on not only the old course, the new course, there's the Eden course, there's uh, the Duke's course. I think it's called the Duke's. Loads of different golf courses. And it's like, it's just a hub of golf in it. Yeah. Like the town is full of golf. Little, You've been out there with the family this morning going a bit shopping. Yeah. Did you go in the little uh, gift shop and yes. stuff on the corner? So, but that's the thing, like, with all that, even if you, if you live in England or Scotland or the UK, whatever, and you can come here, obviously it's very hard to get on the old course, but I don't quite know how you do it and stuff, but... It's Start just up a YouTube channel. Yeah, <laughs> but it's worth just coming up for a, even if it's a day or a night or stay in a cheap hotel down the yeah. road or whatever it might be because just to be if you like golf, which obviously you do listen to this podcast, 
it's so like magical and yeah. everybody who has watched an open since Andrews knows that view and all those buildings and it's just to see it in real life is mad and the Swilkin Bridge oh, it's yeah. actually really small in real life I think it's so yeah. much smaller than you think but it's so iconic and even getting a picture on there and got a lovely picture of you and your family we yeah. got a nice picture of us the four of us I got a really nice one of you your dad and your brother and then you've got a nice one of you and Abby you and your actual all your family and your mum and everything it's, yeah, it's, it's perfect awesome. it's really good so today later on I'm playing Kings Barnes which is another golf course I've desperately wanted to play for ages it looks absolutely out of this world uh, I'm actually going to play with Min Woo Lee I'm hoping to do a break 75 which will be episode yeah. number 9 um, after my performance I feel like either golf is going to be one of two ways today golf's going to feel easy which already <laughs> I feel like I've just cursed myself yes. so I'm going to touch wood because I just feel like yesterday was so hard I feel like today can't be as like it can't be as mentally taxing as it, it was yesterday be. It was a lot because, um, as well, for you, you were like, there's so many things about this surprise. You thought you'd almost like nearly ruined it or whatever, or given it away, and you yeah, hadn't at all. Yeah. So your brain was going in overdrive. And, and I'd was, driven up all the way from Manchester. Up all the way. That's, a good, that's why I beat you. That's the only reason why I beat you. Only reason. Um, yeah, they, I, honestly, as I said, I'm so grateful. It was really, really good. So um, we're going to do a dear Rick in a minute. Kings Barnes today. I'm going to play with Min Woo Lee. We're going to shoot, shoot hopefully, a new episode number nine of Break 75. And then Sunday, playing it reverse. And to finish things off, Monday, 11 o'clock. And I can say this quite openly now because this is going to come yeah. out after the podcast. So no, no, nobody's going to turn up. I am playing St. Andrews again, the old course, with the head pro, Steve North, yeah. for episode number 10 of Break 75, St. Andrews edition. And I feel like if as long as I get some decent weather and I know the golf course now and there's no surprises, and I can stay in the town, I can roll out of bed, I can hit some balls. Monday, I'm going for it. I don't know what I'm going for. Beat my but score. I'm going for it. I'm going to try and beat your score. If you can beat my score, I'll give you a nice, nice firm handshake. <laughs> How does that sound? I, I think now, because the golf course, and, and again, it's hard to say this after what we battled with yesterday, isn't a challenge, super challenging golf course. No, it's not. If you played today, if you played like in today, or maybe even a bit less than today, it's still a little bit of wind. If you played on a flat summer's day, it's easy. I, I reckon. Don't, I don't sound horrible, like I know. cocky. But it's easy. And there's, we played off the backest tees we could play off yesterday, furthest back. There's not many holes where you can go much further there was back, a, Yeah, there? there was a couple I saw, one maybe 30 yards back, and it yeah. a proper tee, but not many, no. But having said that, it's easy. I was looking at any bunkers. There's yeah. some deep bunkers. If yeah. you just rolled off the wrong side of the fairway into a bunker and you thin it and don't get out yeah. or whatever, you could, you, could rack up a, you could rack up a high score. But yeah. I went in one. My caddy gave me bad vi- advice. Playing in the caddy. Um, I think today we're having quite a short, snappy, yeah. concise. Yeah, only because bit, we've got Min Woo coming in is, very soon, which will again be an episode. And I, I don't feel I'm in the right frame of mind at this moment in time. I think people would have loved tuning in just to hear that story. Yeah, like I they wanted to know. It was just to know checking in everybody, saying how much we appreciate everyone listening. And what we also missed, it was really weird. Obviously, Rick's had loads of people asking for his photos of why he's here, which is really nice to see everyone saying how much they love the videos. But what was really bizarre was when we got to the range before playing golf, he just nipped to the bathroom and me and my brother went onto the, the range to hit some balls. And some man was like looking at us like not like in a in a stranger, but kind of looking more than you would do if just somebody comes next to you if that makes sense. He kind of looked over and kind of kept looking. And then we were just chatting and he went, Oh, I thought I recognise your voice and I listened to the podcast. No way. And he was like, That's mad. And he was like, and then next thing obviously you turned up and he was a bit more obviously then he was like, All oh, right, hi Rick, or whatever. But <laughs> it was crazy to think that people like obviously so everywhere listening and stuff. You mean the numbers that we see on pod they're actual people? Actual, like people. People, actual people listen your to friend, this. You said if you listen to this you're, and you're in the clubhouse to your friends. There's one thing you've massively missed. Before we come to the day, Rick, there's one thing that if you don't say on this podcast, there'll be one very disappointed person. My dad's hat. Yeah. So, my dad... <laughs> I'm glad I've reminded you because I think da- if we'd missed that, my dad <laughs> would have been very disappointed. My dad bought a hat to try and keep the rain off him. It was like a proper bucket rain hat. And... It defined gravity it yesterday. Abs- I, I didn't wear my hat yesterday so it kept flying off. He had this bucket hat that had one ear going up over his head. <laughs> and... It literally stayed on all the way around, and I have no idea how that happened. It was out of this world. It was unreal. He had a little fastener inside, and like I say, your dad took 700 pictures on his camera, which I'm ready to share. I'm excited about sharing those. And um, and I won't share all 700. <laughs> but he, uh, the, the hat that he stayed on, 55, 55. I think it's the best 55 quid he's ever spent. Yeah, I'm well, I've, it I've bought it for him since. Oh, I've sent nice him the money, that. so... Yeah, um, his hat right. was good. Dear Rick. So let's get a little dear Rick in. I think it's a short one today. It's a, I'm an emotional wreck today, <laughs> so it's a short and snappy one, but hopefully people have enjoyed listening to that. And um, yeah, anyway, so dear Rick is brought to you by my good friend and your good friend, Motor Caddy. Best friends. Best, best friends. Um, I've actually been using the Motor Caddy stand bag at the minute, the uh, Hydro Flex stand bag. 
And what I love about it is... the good books or what? What I love about it is I can carry my bag and use it as a stand bag if I want to. And the next thing, oh, there's my trolley. Whack, it goes on, fits perfectly. Yeah. It's Can't really good. with that. So this is from um, Anonymous. It says, Dear Guy Vibes Charnock and Rick Nugget Shields. <laughs> You've already won us there, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. You've given the trolley. Um, cracking podcast as usual. They genuinely make my Tuesdays a whole lot better. Keep up the good work. So he's really... That's, if you want to send in a dear Rick and you, you send your email to podcast at rickshields.com, that's the kind of thing that gets you read out on air, doesn't it? Just, just perfect. But it's a good one as well. So here's my dilemma. I'm looking for a few nuggets of advice myself. Like many people, I have a bit of a golf addiction. I'm not the best player, but I can't help wanting to play more and more to improve my game. I am slowly running out of excuses to tell my other half where I am without her suspecting I am having an affair. Just off to see my mum or just going to do a few jobs when in reality I'm heading to the local muni for a cheeky nine holes or the driving range. Can you suggest some more cunning excuses I can use, maybe from personal experience, on what I can use excuse-wise to my partner to get away with? Just for a bit of context, I can only sign off with her every for a round once or every for a round once every one or two weeks. So Mr. Anonymous loves playing golf, wants to play more than once or every other week. What can he say to his partner? <clears throat> Does he love her? <laughs> I mean, maybe just know. maybe just pretend he is having an affair. Yeah. Break up with her and then he can play as much golf as he wants. Yeah, I like that. Um, I, I think, I don't know. Uh, obviously, golf is a, the biggest challenge with golf is the fact that it does take time out of people's day yes. i understand that and if you've been working all week and you get home at the weekend I don't know if he's got kids and whatever but i understand four or five hours being out on the golf course does take away from family time and things yeah. like that so <clears throat> you do need to balance it definitely um uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't give him any more i wouldn't try and come up with any more excuses i'm sure there's many out there and i'm sure many people would recommend oh you pretend you've you pretend you're going doing this or you're doing that i'd just maybe be open with her and just say listen once or twice a week's not cutting it for me. I need to play more golf. I do. Once twice, it's once or once a week or once every two weeks. I think Oof. he said. So even less. I mean, just, just like they go, like come up with a reason. And go, you know, I really love it. It helps me stay fit. It helps me stay mental. I feel like I can have a bit of downtime and free up my space. Um, is there anything that you would like to do? So if I go and play golf, is there anything that you would like to do that that you might go and spend some time on your own mm-hmm. and might go for swimming or go for a run or she might go and start playing golf. I mean, that's. That would be a, an ideal world for him, I'm guessing, if he got his wife into golf, potentially. Yeah. And they could go down and practice together and they can go and you know spend time at the golf club together, potentially. But I think if he loves it and he wants to be open with it, and I'm saying if he loves playing golf, not his <laughs> wife, is is be transparent and just say, listen, I want to play more golf. And once or twice a week, I don't feel like I'm, I'm enjoying it if I only played that much time because I'm not getting better. I'm not practicing as much as I want. Is there anything that you would like to do that would help free me up with a bit more time of going playing golf. Good answer. I feel like I want to come up with some hum- humorous like <laughs> story, but I've just not got the energy today. I haven't <laughs> haven't got it. Well, as we overlook <laughs> the last few golfers, well, I'm saying last few, it's amazing how many people have actually hit it in towards the hotel here and looking over the wall, finding the golf ball. It's been an amazing trip, amazing weekend. Like I say, a one of four days done. Uh, so I'm excited about today and the next couple of days. Thanks to everybody for listening. Like I said, we'll wrap it up pretty soon. We've got Min Woo Lee coming on next or very soon. We've also got some more guests as well lined up. So next week will be a normal podcast back at the studio, I think. Will we it? can squeeze one in, yeah. We, squeeze we might do in. another guest on that day as well. We've yeah, so we'll guest be... from Transatlantic. Yes, and then we will have this one in a couple of weeks with Min Woo Lee. Yes. And then normal service is resumed. You'll be a married man. I'll be a married man. Yeah, I'll be right now. Yeah, but I'll be doing dates. Hiya, mate. Uh, I want to play golf, but the bloody misses. The ball and chain won't let me. Uh, you know, I'm a good player. I can, br- I can break 85. I once shot 81 at St. Yeah. Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do I do? But yeah, that that that's good. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed much. it. Thanks a lot, mate. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you all soon. Thanks for listening to episode number 76 of the Richard's Golf Show podcast.